Hey everybody, Texas Trucker here, Lance's Performance Shop, Lone Star Mopars. It is Sunday, it is finally not the winter wonderland here. Uh, it's actually about 70 degrees, so it's pretty nice outside. That said, debated about how to structure this, I could have done an Amazon tool haul. Um, kind of lean that way, but then in the sake of keeping this shorter and more on point uh, with our gauntlet, the glove challenge if you will, opted to go this route. Now, unfortunately, uh, had I worn some of the gloves I was sent and gotten more seat time with them, I guess you would say. Uh, probably would not have brought all these in, but uh, essentially with a thumb injury, supposed to wear gloves, uh, came in. All I could source locally was these Milwaukee's, which I've got at work. Uh, not a huge fan of them. The mechanics selection sucked. Uh, wound up getting some of their impact gloves at Northern Tool in Lubbock on sale. Never made it back down while the sale was still going. Uh, I got them for like 16 bucks. They're usually $35. They're not terrible, but I have literally used them only as a, like, protective glove. I've not actually worked in them, and they are falling apart. <laughs> and, uh, it's the right, right thumb that I need the protection on is actually falling apart in that area. And that doesn't speak well. That's kind of where I left off with mechanics gloves, sort of having a short lifespan. That's why I'd actually switched to Western Safety. I liked these. I bought a ton of them. This is my last pair. Uh, I've yet to get by a Harbor Freight to see if those are still on the board. That said, it wouldn't offer me impact protection, uh, but that's where I was in terms of those gloves. So, what we have here is just an assortment of stuff, and the problem I have is probably going to relate to many of you. Uh, when you need gloves, particularly, you know, if you break a thumb or a finger, uh, rehab, whatever, you know, practical application it might have, you're going to be like me. You're going to have Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, maybe Harbor Freight, uh, maybe like a specialty hardware store or supplier might have something in stock. Uh, now a lot of these places can come in and they can buy a lot of these gloves, but they're not going to have them in stock, behind the counter, on a display, able for you to feel them, try them on, see what they're like in person. And that really sucks for us, the end user, the consumer. Uh, that's the case with all of these. Now the glove that I had had experience with is Cayman, Cayman, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Uh, and oddly enough, that came from a welding supplier. So uh, our uh, welder actually wound up graduating, was going to stay, go full time, all that stuff. Broke up with his girlfriend, went away. Uh, so we had to get a new welder. And uh, when we did that, uh, every welder we've had lately has been different. Some like goat skin, some like pig skin. And uh, needless to say, when the welding supply guy rolled through, he had some new that he'd never had before gloves that people were really liking. They were Cayman. And it turns out they were pretty nice. That is the only way I knew of this company. Uh, I went to their website trying to check stuff out and then through Amazon, that's where all of these were sourced. And I gotta say, I kind of bought these for aesthetics and just to see what kind of their standard mechanic type of a glove would be. Uh, these are a little bit pricey. It is their part number 2950-5. Uh, they were 1704. And uh, what they're going to brag about Aside from that being apparently reflective, which that's kind of minuscule compared to the stuff I've grown accustomed to, <laughs> um, these are going to have a padded palm and a Rhinotech synthetic leather. Now, came in everything I bought from them at work has come with like ridiculous quantities of stickers. Uh, the welder instantly just slapped them all over his new helmet. That's not really my style, but whatever makes him happy. Uh, there is the palm, though. That'll be, I guess, our Rhinotech synthetic leather. It looks like it does have. I don't know, that might be more aesthetic than anything. Maybe it adds a little extra texture, but it's almost just a pattern. You know, I could come in and we could go buy pink felt at a hobby store instead of the blue felt. And even though it looks different, it's the same thing. I kind of feel like that's what that is. Uh, they call that padded. Again, I've kind of grown to use several different things here. I'm not quite sure I would agree, but let's go with what they say here. I will admit these look awesome. I love the color scheme, black and blue, but that doesn't really have anything to do with the quality of glove. Comfortable neoprene cuff with hook and loop closure. That's a secure fit again. 99% of the time, I don't close my gloves unless I've got something hot that will fall down them. Uh, there is an air mesh ultra breathable back, which provides the ultimate comfort and support. I would go with comfort, maybe not support. That's sort of a uh, dichotomy they provided there for us. Lightweight yet durable Rhinotech synthetic leather. We will see how it holds up. Uh, neoprene knuckle support and protector with reflective film. A couple months ago I might have run with that, but since I've been wearing like true, properly done impact gloves, that's a laughable claim that would apply 
<laughs> just like if the exos next door said it. Uh, and then for the padded palm, they say internal padded palm with G grip for extra grip and comfort. Now, if you want to check out their full line of gloves, there's their website. I don't think you can buy direct. And they are relatively new. I will say the welding gloves have held up really, really well. And they make some nice, unique stuff. But uh, that is what we have. There's $17.04. Uh, let's see. I just had a crud ton of pliers. There's something else with these that we need to showcase. You know what? I might do that off camera because that would take a little while with the glove. Now, I will give you a quick update. I started just wearing the Vibe uh, from Alpha, and then I switched over to the Renegade because we started having snow, and I was just trying to get a feel for all of them. This one's relatively clean. Again, I do most of my stuff with my left hand. It's a little bit dirtier. I feel bad because these were such nice gloves. I love these, and uh, they have held up really well, and unlike the mechanics that are falling apart, I actually do work in these, so uh, that is cool, but again, we'll come back at the end just to maintain your interest and try all these on, see what we think about them. Part of the reason for this video is actually just so I can get these opened up, introduced, and start using them, by the way. So uh, up next, we've got a pair here from Ironclad. Ironclad is one of, I guess, the bigger, more well-known glove manufacturers, kind of oil and gas, I guess, would be their specialty, and then they do some offshoots of that. Luckily, you can pick them up on Amazon, and for a quite a bit less, you can get them on their website. What we have here, again, this is not impact style. This was just, you know, since I was trying them out, I wanted to see if this is great. Does the lesser glove hold up well? Does it compare to the Western Safety, the original mechanics? How does it rate? So we're kind of going all in on this. But um, right here, this is going to be their MGG. Dash O four dash L. It'll actually start with XO EXO dash MGG O four L. Uh, the last digit, obviously, being the size, go accordingly. Uh, price eleven forty two, so not bad. About six dollars less than the Caymans over here. Uh, these kind of are a mixed bag. People either love them or hate them. And uh, I want to find out. I do like the color scheme on these as well. Uh, but again, it is their XO line. There you can see the part number. <clears throat> Flipping it around, they claim that it's got a diamond clad palm. And it's a brevet diamond clad silicone. There's impact protection. I don't see it. Again, a couple months ago, I'd have been like, yeah, sure, impact protection. Now, this and the Kong, I would say impact protection. This, no. <laughs> that would be a false claim. Uh, hook and loop for our Velcro. It's got a TPR cuff puller. And there is a sweat wipe, which... Currently, I hate that on the Milwaukee. That's one of the things I like the least about it. So uh, that's really all they're bothering to say there. On my notes over here, what did I pin down? They claim that is their moto grip, uh, which again, it actually does have pictures, you know, of people riding dirt bikes and motorcycles and stuff. And they claim it is a silicone infused palm. And why is that important? Well, they say that they do this entire process through heat and that will keep it from peeling off. If you've used gloves like this, I have friends that work for like, you know, freight lines and carriers and they just literally handle boxes all day until they graduate up to the forklift to make a little more money. They will come in and they will get gloves like this, I guess, for the extra grip, but routinely where they fail, they wear out in the typical spots, but the palm, whatever stuff is there, actually starts to peel off. Ironclad is claiming it won't do that because it's heat infused. And again, their other tout online was the Terry Claw Sweat Wiper. <laughs> so Coming over here, we've got the Ironclad Kong. I will admit I was excited about this one because, again, my goal right now is to have kind of the impact protection, the support for my thumb. And this, I thought, would be a really, really good one. Now, I realized that they were iron, you know, oil and gas is kind of where they get a lot of their bread and butter, their return customers, their high volume sales. Had I have seen this in a store and been able to try it on, I would not have bought it at all. And I might have been able to find another Kong glove I would have brought in, but it would not have been this one. Um, not a knock on the glove itself, just kind of, I don't think it's stylistically what I need to do. And I don't mean that from an aesthetic standpoint, I mean that from a functional standpoint. Uh, so this would be their part number, SDX2-04-L, again, last consonant being our size. Price point $14.72, so you're only about $3 between these two. Uh, and again, there are a lot of variants of the Kong gloves. If I can tolerate this one and use it in limited situations and like it, I might give it another chance. That's going to largely depend on things like this, which have already impressed me. 
Uh, it is oil and gas safety impact, and I do think they probably did a really good job for there. If I was on a deck or a rig somewhere, I think I would probably appreciate these gloves a lot more. Uh, there are some strange claims here. They claim 80% impact absorption on metacarpals, and then they say that the palm is 25% more abrasion resistance, which I could see that based on that. Uh, anything with dots I've had a bad history with, I'm not a fan of. We used to have the knit cotton gloves at work that had the dots. I hated those. Those are the worst gloves I've ever had in my life. <laughs> and, uh, they just, I don't know, I hate them. Uh, if you know what I'm talking about, you can probably relate. Uh, but then what they do is they say that the knuckle has 90%. And the fingers have 76.4. And uh, then they come out with an 80% figure overall. I don't quite mathematically know that I would agree with that number. But bottom line is I do think if we were in a situation where I was on the job that required something like this, these would be advantageous. As is when I just tried them on, not, uh, not really feeling it. Again, I do think I could have selected a better glove for myself and what I do if I had access to this stuff. And that's the problem. I can't walk in anywhere. Uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, Harbor Freight, a hardware store, a local mom and pop shop, um, Granger. I mean, a lot of those places could buy this for you, but they're not going to stock it. And then you're going to make the same mistake I did. You're going to be like, well, yeah, I think, I think that one might be the best. And then you're going to get it in and you're going to hate it. And if you ever bother to research or follow up, you'll be like, wait, you know, should have gone with that one. Uh, so again, we will put that on in just a second. There's just a lot of stuff up top. We've got to cut off of those right here. This might be the cheesiest looking glove out of this group. And it is the one that I have worn and have liked the best. <laughs> so I liked it so well, I actually cut it and took it apart. There really wasn't much to that one. All of these kind of have something extra particularly these two. This one is just kind of like cuffed together. Uh, it is from Magid, something I had never heard of. Apparently they're just big into safety PPE stuff, um, which again, all these years I've been in purchasing, I've never had anyone try to sell me any of their products, safety glasses, respirators, gloves. So, you know, uh, this is where you kind of start to see mechanics and how big of a shadow they leave over the industry. You've probably never heard a lot of you probably never heard of Cayman and you probably didn't know of Ironclad either. Again, not something you can just waltz in and find locally. Uh, again, maybe if you live in Houston or, you know, an oil refinery town, maybe there's a supplier that comes by and stocks this. But for the vast majority of us, no, not going to be aware of any of them. Uh, this, however, is the Magid T-Rex, which, hey, cool name, cool color. Uh, it is their Windstorm Impact. It's priced $14.49, uh, so slightly less than the Kong, a little bit more than these, and way less than the Caymans, which ironically are the most expensive glove here, which if I threw these out, you would probably think this is the cheapest, that's the second cheapest, third cheapest, and most expensive, and that's not the case at all, which, again, it's kind of what you run into with Amazon sometimes. However, <laughs> this is their TRX 744, and it is going to feature Inflex Impact. Now, I know what you're thinking. That looks incredibly dorky. It looks like it's going to be cumbersome. It is not. That moves just as fluid, if not more fluid, than some standard gloves I've worn. I can't explain it. It's one of those things, if you put it on and try it, you'll see what I mean. Uh, this has a cool mesh vent, and I will honestly say, just like when I said these Renegades kind of put out, you know, the cold clap of air, that's what these do. Uh, and it's even a slightly more pronounced, that was a design feature for that glove. Uh, they are goat skin. They have a reinforced thumb cradle, which again, that is important. You can kind of see it right there. If you're wondering where the other glove is, it's up top. It's just a little dirty. Uh, so that's why I opted to just have this one down here. Uh, let's see here. They are A4 cut resistance. They have level 4 abrasion resistance, and they have level 3 puncture protection. So that was another big thing. I know it's on Amazon, but they actually took the time to list that out prominently. Whereas these others, particularly the Kong, which that's kind of the selling feature of it, is an impact glove, didn't really articulate that near as well. Maybe it's buried somewhere, uh, but got to give credit where credit is due, and their description was better. So uh, what I want to do is kill the camera. We're going to cut this because there are some bonus features, if anyone cares about them, with these two gloves. I don't think the EXO has anything special, but uh, I will then pull this one off. We'll check these all out. Uh, and in fact... 
I uh, know it's just easier if I kill the camera. So I'll do that. We'll uh, finish kind of trying these on, give you my first thoughts, take it from there. All right, so first thing first, our little NWS cutter here, the tiny, tiny ones that fit in the palm of your hand. Perfect tool for this job. Uh, ordinarily, I would have had to use some big side cutter, not necessarily as big as our <laughs> 318s here, uh, but basically like something six inches or larger. And I can honestly say, uh, this is a much better tool for the job. So, came and had just a crud ton of those stupid little tags like you're accustomed to with clothing. Ironclad actually utilized little cable ties. So that's kind of an interesting difference between the two. That said, I have the Cayman on. This is my right hand with the broken thumb. And while they look fantastic, uh, I'm not super thrilled, particularly when I consider these were the most expensive. Uh, they are padded here. The problem I've got is right up here at the top where that's reinforced. It, uh, it kind of makes things awkward and I would almost prefer to have that out here where I would actually need the impact protection. Now this is padded. The grip, does it make a difference? I don't know that it does if anything. Again, I was kind of skeptical of that. Again, I love these aesthetically, uh, but I'm not not quite sure about this right here. That's my holdup. That is making these cumbersome to use. It's almost like if you pictured brass knuckles and I was holding them in my palm right there. Uh, that's almost, like I said, just becoming a cumbersome, uncomfortable reason to not utilize this pair of gloves. Ironically, uh, the impacts I just had on from Alpha and then these T-Rexes, even though that looks like it would be, I mean, it's flopping, you can tell. Even though that looks like it would hinder things, it's almost more hindered here. Now, the other issue I ran into when I first opened these up, I'm not sure I like that coming down at an angle. That also sort of looks like a cheap Velcro. Um, what I saw as I opened these, and you can see it right there, I know the camera's not really focused on it, that is padded, but do you see how it's up on that side? I think over time as you put these gloves on, not necessarily taking them off, but every time you go to put them on, with the pad lifting up, I feel like you're going to just prematurely tear that. You can actually see the stitching in there. Uh, the right hand glove that I've got on, which was hard for me to get on with my thumb, actually had some uh, bad stitching there too. Uh, you can kind of see some along the label there. That's what that is. Uh, do we want to turn them inside out? It's kind of hard to do since I have a glove on, but that might be a worthwhile thing. Again, I am not a seamstress. I just know what a pad is. I know what a stitch is. I kind of have a rough idea on some of the materials. I don't know about these being the most expensive thing I brought in. I'm kind of thinking maybe if we could pick these up, you know, at the $9.99 a pair mark. Right here as I try to put this on, I'm running into the same issue where I'm sort of forcing that pad up. Now this is my left hand that's not injured, and the thumb is much easier to work with. This one is just almost like right where that stitching is, which again is kind of sloppy. Uh, truth be told, I can make that claim because you can see that little the string there that hops the really long one. That's not just a loose fiber. That's actually just kind of there, and then it's not replicated on this one. So again, I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just kind of trying to state what I see. Uh, we've also got a loose thread over there, but it's mainly this. I'm not sure if that's positioned well. I almost think it should be slid down and then it wouldn't be as big of an issue because right now, everywhere this peaks, that's hindering my mobility. And then also what's happening, I don't know if you can tell, but instead of that being flat on my palm, it's kind of bubbling up. Uh, they are somewhat comfortable, I'll give them that. Uh, black and blue, I'm gonna like that color scheme virtually any time, but in terms of impact protection, none, but again, that's not why I bought these. They were advertising it has some. I'm gonna disagree with that. If I had these, would I buy them again? Only if they break in to the point that that's a non-issue and they don't fail at the points we've mentioned along with the usuals. Will these last longer than the mechanics? Possibly, we'll just have to feel it out. But uh, overall, I think they're a little, little expensive. Maybe if you could snag these for around the $10 mark, I think that'd be more of the price point for them. Just sort of awkward, and I don't know, maybe it's me, maybe it's I have weird sized hands compared to what they were basing these off of, but 
I think that just needs to be down. It's almost like the template was off. The palm I sort of get, I kind of feel like it's in the right spot, you know, for the most part. This I feel like it was shifted up. Again, if we slid that down to where that was kind of back down with, you know, the end of the hand and then this wouldn't extend over, maybe that's intentional, maybe it's not to me with the cumbersome effect it generates. You know, like index is going to be my main gripping finger. I don't know. Um, they look good. They are somewhat comfortable. I think I'd actually get kind of hot in them. Uh, in terms of grip, I'm not too sure. I'm not ready to commit to anything until I've gotten to use them. And rest assured, that is what I'm going to do by making this video. I can now feel good about using these gloves and trying them out. It's very hard to get off my uh, broken thumb, I'll say that. So I think I will cut, but something we do have to note, number one, if you are a sticker person, and I know a lot of you are, uh, that's not off-center, it's just the label. Uh, the sticker itself will have the you know, even border. You do get a sticker, uh, which again, our welder absolutely loved. They did have, to their credit, really the best advertisement on their gloves. Um, there's more here. And again, while I'm not a huge fan of these initially, they might break in, they might surprise me. I will say though, if you're looking for welding gloves, and you burn through the usual stuff and you're trying to find a new brand, they make a killer welding glove and they have some really nice stuff. But again, until you can get it in and try it, which is really hard to do because nowhere stocks anything, this is kind of what you have to do is just take a, go out on a hope and a prayer or see if somebody that's reputable has a review you like. Now, carabiner, I'm not sure, I'm not a huge carabiner guy. I guess if you have a ton of keys or you're always losing these or you're trying to do something in the home gym or with, really light tie down stuff that is included free of charge again maybe if we eliminate that we could drop the price point a little bit but it might be a selling point to some of you i'm having trouble getting this off so i'm going to kill it we're going to come in and we will be in the ironclad exo all right so we are now in the ironclad exo i gotta say they went on much much easier than the caimans and the velcro i had to actually un velcro this in order to get it on this is the part here that I just, I don't know, it looks cheap to me. Again, it could actually be more expensive. It could be top of the line, and I just don't know it because I don't study Velcro. But I'm going to press down on that. Again, this is my uninjured thumb. And when I peel this off, which I will actually do left-handed because, again, of said thumb injury. Does that sound weak to you? Because it does to me. And case in point, if I'm to wrap this thing around me, this is, I believe, a much better Velcro, which, again... I'm somebody that typically open cuff stuff until it's like, ooh, you know, I'm grinding. We're going to get something hot down here. So check out, check this out. It came off easy, but it just sounded like there was better adherence. I don't know. Maybe this one will wear out quicker than that one. Uh, and for me personally, it's not a huge deal anyway. But I do have to say these went on much easier. And I'm loving the fact that I have mobility here in my fingers because we don't have that awkward pad which the more I've thought about it, I kind of just feel like it was shifted or it needs to be shifted or redesigned or something. Um, overall feel, that feels like a pretty quality glove with this on. Like this just feels like lightweight, bottom dollar, entry level glove, which basically is for ironclad. This feels slightly better than that. It just feels like maybe, you know, with a little R&D or real-world feedback from people, maybe that gets adjusted and it turns out to be better. With this, I can't really tell that we have any extra grip. It looks like it would provide something, but it's almost just like if I flipped uh, these over, you know, and we had a different color scheme going. I'm not sure that that's anything special with this. It actually is. Now, again, they claim that this is heated on and so it won't peel off. Typically what happens uh, if you get a scuff or you handle something and it starts to come off, it's just going to be like a big strip and then eventually everything flakes from that point. They say that won't be an issue. These at the price point, again, of being 1142, I feel like you could take a chance on them, bring them in, see what you think. But again, the mobility is way, way better than these Caymans. Uh, and it feels pretty cool. It feels like a very lightweight glove. Again, nothing along the lines of our impact stuff that I've been wearing and should be wearing. Uh, but I don't really have any complaints on it. In terms of the workmanship, I don't see anything blatant. Uh, there's not any stitches or loose threads that I'm able to see. Again, check this out. This is the factory sealed one. It's just a more solid closure, in my opinion. As we open this up, let's try to flip this out a little bit for you. 
you can kind of see the inner workings here. That's a pretty clean seam. Again, I am not a seamstress. I can't tell you if this is proper, better, terrible, but I don't see anything sloppy. And that to me says, hey, it was done decently well. And that's what I'm going to run with. Now, how long will these last? Will they hold up? Will they be worn out in a week and a half i don't know but i will find out for you in terms of anything extra no but they did do a nice job color coordinating their product tag and that and again it was held on if you can tell by the size there not by like nine thousand of those little clear things like these were but with a cable tie so um again i don't know that i would want to pay 1142 for that i think it's a fair pair if they last I'm kind of thinking put these more in the $9.99 range and sell some of them. Uh, but again, this is something you just, I can't waltz in a store and find something like this and try it and buy it and see how it holds up. We've had to resort to the internet, and those are my initial impressions. So, what we're going to do now is throw on the Kong and uh, get our, uh, our reactions to All right, before we jump into this bad boy, what we need to talk about is the Terry Cloth Sweat Wiper. Well, I'm not a huge fan of that, and I absolutely hate it on the Milwaukee pair I have at work currently. That one didn't bother me. It didn't drag on my thumbnail. It didn't drag over the blisters on the stitches. Nothing along those lines. Uh, so that's kind of just a non-issue. I wouldn't know it was there. I wouldn't care about it. And that's the way it should be, in my opinion. Now, right here, this is the Ironclad Kong. Again, I do believe I could have picked one that would have been better for me, but... I was sort of thinking, hey, that's going to have really good protection. It'll probably keep my thumb nice and stiff. One of the big things I liked about it is that it goes all the way. It's not a lot of the impact stuff stops like here and doesn't actually go to the fingertip. You know, not necessarily wrapping around, but just all the way down. These did. Now, the problem I have is this is almost like I'm in a cast. And that makes me feel really good about this having good impact protection. But at the same time, I'm not going to be able to do much of anything. Uh, where I think I could actually use these at work, and it would be very rare, you know, it's essentially material comes in 20, 24, 12 foot sticks. I could handle the material, like if I'm picking up 4 inch solid rounds, right, and we're moving it into the shop, this would work well for that. Uh, you know, 6 inch pipe, whatever it might be that doesn't require a finite grip or any functionality in my fingertips and extremities, I think this would work. If I was dragging chain, uh, if I have customer buys 800 feet of cable and I've got a brand new 1,000 foot roll, I can come in. Smart thing to do here, by the way, is to cut the 200 feet, not 800. But uh, it would work for things like that in terms of like, hey, you know, let me, let me stop over here and help my girlfriend fix a radiator hose. It's not going to happen. Um, maybe they break in over time, but initially, this is almost a useless glove for me. And that's really sad because I was kind of excited about these. Now, like I said, maybe I could find something in their line better. That provides a little bit of grip. I honestly think this is better. Now, this might last longer is the thing. Uh, I'll be full upfront and honest with you. I'm not sure I'm going to use these much because... Truth be told, bringing material in and out of the shop, whether it be a delivery or taking it off of a rack and bringing it into the shop to cut it down and produce something, that's not something that's done every day. You know, that might be like once or twice a week. Uh, if it's like a special order or something, or we just burned through a stick of pipe and didn't think to bring one back in. Uh, and the bottom line for me, if I'm out there working in, say, my... Renegade A6 from Alpha, am I going to be like, whoa, hold on, you know, go get the forklift warmed up, let me run back up to the front and switch gloves real quick. I'm not the type, I don't want to have like eight different pairs of gloves that I'm constantly rotating through. I'm just going to wear the same pair for everything. And while these would be pretty good for that, they're not going to be really good for anything else unless they miraculously break in, which... I mean, it's kind of a struggle to get back the fingertips to the palm, so I'm not sure that they will. Uh, they look cool. I'll give them that. They're the only open cuff ones I brought in, which that's kind of, you know, I don't have any issues. It's nice and loose. It breathes easy for what it is. It's just there's a complete lack of mobility. It's almost like this top joint in my fingers doesn't exist. I don't know if you can tell. I'm able to bend here, kind of at that cuff link, but it's really hard to get that one going, so... I'd love to try something else in the Kong line. I do think, again, if it was just I was going to be moving material all day, every day, I think these would actually be fine. 
uh, cutting cable, you know, picking up sticks of channel iron or angle iron. I think these would be pretty solid, but anything past that, I just, I don't know about it. And you can tell again, this is oil and gas specific. They'll put your name or your ID number, an employer or supervisor. They're pretty nice. And again, you would think something like this would be, you know, 35 bucks, somewhere in that price line via Amazon. I got them for just barely more than these. 1472 uh, was our price on them. So could I use these? Yes, but it would be a super ridiculous limited instance where it would actually be beneficial and that makes them almost useless to me, which will I even have them there to try them? I might use them once or twice, maybe see if I can break them in type of a thing. Honestly, the best purpose they will serve for me right now is that does do a pretty good job of keeping my thumb straight and in place and I can't really bend it. Uh, so they might at least serve that function for me. Uh, now again, if this was a different application, if I had a different job in my life, these might be great. But for what I do right now and then my hobbies here at the house, these are a no. Uh, we're not going to be wrenching with these things. Uh, and in fact, even something routine and redundant like changing tires all day, that would be not ideal at all. <laughs> so I think it's a good glove. I'm sure it works well in its intended application. Uh, but unfortunately for me, that does not cross over. So maybe at some point, if I really love these things and want to pick up another pair, maybe then I'll try another Kong glove. But for now, I'll just see if I can break them in. If I can and they get better, we will do a follow-up. That said, one more left here. I'm going to make a wardrobe change. And, be right and we're back. back. We've just about wrapped this up. Up last is the Magid T-Rex Windstorm. Again, these are cool gloves. And I mean that in two senses. One, they just look neat, at least to me. But two... This is almost like there's a fan blowing on my hand. I can't explain it. It's one of those things you'll have to try out for yourself. But if these look dirty, they are slightly. Uh, I actually use them for some real minor stuff here in the shop. They kind of got dirty. But that's my point. I wanted to use them. And out of these, this was the pair that I was the most intrigued by. And it's why I started using them first. And my plan was I would keep my left hand one totally clean for you. That way we'd have a good accurate representation of it. Again, they come in in a beautiful white. There's none of this like discoloration, yellowing brown, oil, uh, cleaner stains or anything like that. Uh, they are goat skin. That differentiates them here from what we brought in. Uh, the kind of sub goal here was to feel these out. Like were these both going to be amazing from ironclad and I'd want to make them a go-to? Was the Cayman going to be just as good as welding gloves I've used at work? Uh, were these going to be total pieces of trash? You know, this will allow me to kind of follow suit. If these fall apart and that peels off, we're probably done in that route. Um, I just feel like that was just not quite R&D'd properly because, again, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt based on how good their other gloves are that I have used. And then these suckers here, I kind of thought, yeah, those are probably going to be pretty bad. And I don't mean that like the kids say, I mean like laughable, you know, type of thing. And honestly, they're pretty dadgum good, I'm not going to lie. Particularly when you consider that we paid $14.49 for these. So way less than the Caymans, slightly more than this kind of like bargain entry level glove. And just a little bit cheaper than the Kong, which I do think we got a good, really good buy on. That's just unfortunate. They won't really serve me as I thought they would. These suckers here, though, they are very cool. Everything is thin, lightweight. It is vented. This provides pretty legit impact protection for us. In terms of having this here, I have full articulation of my fingers. Uh, completely different than my experience here in the Kongs. Uh, it works well here. There's nothing hindering myself like we had on these Caymans. It's just, it's hard to explain, but these feel ventilated. Now, this is a glove brand that, you know, I'd never heard of, never tried, and it's something that I will actually be interested in following up with. Uh, let's check out their Velcro, since we've kind of made that a thing. It seems solid. It seems like the Velcro may be a little better even than the Ironclad. Um, I should have probably gone over these, but again... I've got to give these guys credit because if you have certain specs you're forced to meet, uh, whether it be you as a supervisor, purchaser, provider type of thing, supplier even, or just as an employee coming in having to bring your own equipment, everything pertinent to this pair of gloves is right there on that tag. ANSI Cut A4, EN388 Cut 5, ANSI Puncture Level 3, uh, Country of Origin, maybe that'll make a difference, maybe 
Pakistan and Thailand stitch better than China. I don't know. The fact of the matter is most of these gloves are going to be made in the same factories with slight variances. And the difference is going to come in the materials more likely than not. Uh, these don't have, I mean, to be fair to these, they probably had the most padding. I mean, there's none whatsoever in these. Uh, dexterity is really good there, though. But these are... They look comical, I'll give them that, you know. I kind of think they look cool, but I could see people laughing these off. They're actually surprisingly good. And in terms of, like, stitching sloppiness or defaults, everywhere I look with my limited knowledge of anything like this, it looks like they did a really good job on them. Uh, and again, the Velcro seems solid. That's a very, very light pad. Again, Cayman's had way better pad. But in terms of functionality, this is the one that I've used the most out of these. It's the only one I've used out of these, truthfully. And I've been really happy with it. It does kind of feel funky around my thumb, which again is reinforced. Shout out to them, you can kind of see all that. No sloppiness in the stitching. What I want to do here is kind of exhibit B for you. I want to come in. Everything's awkward when your thumb's broken. I mean, that's why we're using these two fingers to get this on instead of my thumb. This is for me to determine if this is weird because of my thumb that's screwed up or if it's just the glove. And I think it's my thumb, <laughs> in all honesty, because uh, this one feels totally different. Uh, it feels fine. Maybe I'm just too sensitive or the stitch line somewhere from the reinforcements dragging over the blisters. But uh, I got to say, for the money, out of these four that I brought in, if I had to recommend something to you, it would be these because they're reasonably priced comparatively and on top of that they have impact protection cut protection they're the most premium material out of these the goat skin and they're also the coolest and i mean that again from it's 95 degrees outside which glove is going to make my hands sweat the least i believe it would be these because again hard to explain if you had them on i think you'd relate to it i uh, just it feels good so kong if you have used Kong gloves and you're kind of like me, you do general stuff at work, you're not just handling super heavy materials and chains all day. What did you find that worked well for you? Because this isn't something I want to shut the door on completely. It'll probably be way out in the future because we will have a lot of gloves I'll need to burn through. Uh, I'm not just going to go out and buy another pair of gloves. I want to actually know that I'm going to like them or suspect I will and also have a need for them. And currently there's not a need because truth be told, even though I'm kind of unhappy with these, I'm going to try to break them in and then just burn them down to the point they're not functional anymore, which is what I do. Uh, so we'll see how well these hold up. But right now, out of rating just these four, I would say for the money and the premium materials and fitment, just overall quality, I would go with the T-Rexes. Second place, I'd give to Exo. Third place, I'd give to these. Now, aesthetically, I love the black and the blue. I actually like the aesthetics of the palm. It's just that reinforcement is poorly positioned, in my opinion. Maybe I'm mistaken, maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's my hand, but no. <laughs> and again, to their credit, I had experience with this brand of gloves prior, and I love them. I would buy those welding gloves over and over again until something equal or better comes along that's at a better price. So, uh, But number one right here, number two, number three... And number four, even though I do think if I had to pick a glove to wear for somebody to slap a sledgehand or, you know, swing a, you know, 40 foot of chain down upon me and strike me, that would be my selection for number one. But in terms of what I'm trying to do, that's almost useless. So I will try to break them in. I might, like I said, get some use out of them just kind of like as a splint glove, like my mechanics, because those impact ones are actually tearing. And again, I've not worked in them. I've literally only worn them as like, here, I'm going to go run errands in real life, the grocery store, you know, uh, go to my nephew's basketball game. That's the glove I've been wearing and they're falling apart. And that's extremely unfortunate, but follows suit with my experiences in the past. So with that said, I am not done with the gloves. We've got a couple more. Not many, but a couple. I'm trying to kind of cover some brands I've never known of, see what I like. Uh, but right now, again, as a follow-up, because I will be cycling through, I've been wearing these Renegade A6s as of late. I love them. Again, that looks like it would be cumbersome and you couldn't bend it all like the Kongs. Not the case. So, 
Uh, it is what it is, but out of these four, this is currently number one. Maybe these fall apart in two weeks. Maybe the Kongs break in. Maybe these turn out to be the best glove out of them all when it's said and done. I don't know that yet. I'm going to find it out. And if you're interested, I encourage you to subscribe, uh, follow along. I'll probably get some of this stuff up on the forum. LoneStarMopars.com is the website. Make sure you're following us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all three at Lone Star Mopars. Uh, similarly, subscribe here. Make sure you jump through all the hoops. Jump your charger across the creek. Maybe they'll notify you when we post a new video, which should be every Saturday. But I'm kind of losing my voice. Hopefully covered this as best I could. You either cover it or you don't, and I'd rather err on the side of more information. I'm very happy with my decision now to separate this from the rest of the Amazon stuff. And we actually have some more gloves to take a look at. So uh, with that said, I will now start putting these suckers into use and we'll see how they stack up. But as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Maybe we've introduced you to some gloves that you didn't know about that intrigue you. If that is the case, if you think, man, those look really cool and you go to their website and you bring some in and you love them, Come back, leave a comment, and let people know. Same thing, if you use these EXOs and swear by them, or you purchase them and they fall apart in two weeks every single time, leave a comment, share what you know. That's the goal here. I don't do this stuff for views. That's why I don't do clickbait. I Believe you me, I could structure things differently. I value sharing information. And in this case, it's a lot of unknowns. Similarly, again, on the Kong, if you have experience, if you've used different versions and you found one that's better for just, say, mechanics or you know industrial maintenance type of stuff not just i'm on a you know deck using very heavy large equipment post that up as well uh, but i'll quit rambling once more thanks for watching i will catch you back here for more action from the shop